Yeah, I just started the recording now. Okay. Great. Good evening, everybody, to the uh, March 8th PVC meeting. As usual, we are virtual. And uh, tonight we have the approve the minutes, the public safety complex, the solar at Cogswell, a highlights of last year's uh, efforts. And then we have other business. We just have a couple of topics, I think, in the other business, not very much. Um, so with that, I will kick off the meeting to ask for approval of the minutes from the last meeting. Recommend approval. Say again, George? I recommend approval. Okay, do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Richard. Okay. Uh, with that coming to the vote, we are a virtual meeting, so we'll go through the roll call. Any questions first? Seeing none, hearing none, coming to the vote. We'll go through roll call. Richard? Aye. George? Aye. Erwin? Gene? Aye. And the chair is aye. Okay, great. Okay, so we will go to the next uh, agenda item, the uh, public safety complex, fire station two, and I guess we'll turn that over to you, Ken. Okay, hang on here while I <clears throat> get my share screen going. All right. Um, before I get into the actual agenda, I, I did a little bit of an update as people were getting on, but just want to give you an update on the accident from last Friday. Yeah. We have no new information on the condition of the, uh, of the gentleman, um, although Steve had mentioned that uh, Christian Reardon from Consigli said he had a cracked rib and he'd been complaining of back, a sore back on Friday, so that may be the, the reaction there. He had a cut on the head. Uh, he was lucid, talking, knew where he was. I'm sure they checked him for a possible concussion with the cut on the head, but uh, we have no further on information on his, uh, his status beyond that. Um, the subcontractor was out today, met with Consigli, um, went through safety procedures, uh, new plan, new logistics. They had hoped to have the replacement plank on site Thursday, but it looks like it's going to be Friday now. Uh, but what Consigli has done with the structural steel contractor is they've rejiggered their sequencing to allow the structural steel contractor to continue on other parts of the building, not over the uh, area, the firing range. And uh, hopefully on Friday, they'll it's one day's worth of erection, then they've got grouting and stuff like that. But the erection that they need their, the crane for is only one day, so hopefully they accomplish that on Friday when the replacement plank bleh, replacement plank arrives. But uh, they'll be able to maintain their structural steel schedule by by rejiggering the sequences. So that's the that's the uh, that that's the Cliff Notes version of uh, what happened and where we're going. Did so you say it was a beam? No, it was a pl concrete plank. Plank, concrete plank. Okay. Yeah, there was a, they were using a vacuum lift and it's unclear now, uh, did the vacuum fail? Did the, 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 uh, the connection fail that, that will all come up. They're still investigating. We have no, uh, um, no information on that end as of yet. We'll have to wait. The investigation's for under the way. And in terms of the schedule, there's not much of an impact. The investigation is not impacting the schedule for some. No, no, the OSHA released us on Friday to open up for work today. And like I said, the uh, uh, plant contractor uh, will have the replacement plank in on Friday, but the structural steel guys will be able to continue for the, the, uh, the rest of this week um, doing areas that aren't over the firing range. Okay. So if anyone, if there are no other questions, I'll move into the I don't know why this always turns blue on me, but it does, and I can't get it off. Um, oh, let me just let me just make one uh, <clears throat> statement, if I may, or or a question. In terms of any questions that come to the committee or anywhere else, they should be directed to who? What? If anybody the, gets asked questions, Ken or Steve, what, what, what's the best source of of? Um, I I would say I would say they go to Cindy, Steve. What do you think? 
I have, uh, Cindy has received questions. She and I have talked. Um, uh, formally, all questions really should go through the town communication. Uh, okay. I just wanna make sure that people know that because it, uh, we don't have enough information. You guys will have more information than we do. And I think it's only appropriate to channel it properly. So, um, okay, thank you. All right, so schedule uh, phase two at uh, headquarters, the foundation's complete. Uh, the range slab has been mostly poured. Uh, we poured that in order to drop the uh, baffles for the firing range down in there because they won't fit once the deck gets on. Uh, phase two waterproofing is complete, backfills ongoing. That's almost complete now also uh, around the foundation. The carport walls complete and mostly backfilled. Uh, we start, it, so obviously the steel and plank erection is, uh, is underway. We pick that plank erection up at the end of the week. Or fire station two, all the slab on grade and slab on deck is poured with the exception of the topping slab in the main apparatus bay. MEP work on the lower level, upper level uh, is ongoing, a little bit on the main level, but not much because the uh, mason just finished up. They were just actually cleaning up on that level today. Uh, CMU work on the main level and the lower level is substantially complete. Exterior framing is substantially complete and AVB and roofing is underway. They're looking for a temporary weather tight date of the 17th, I believe it is. Um, we're looking for substantial completion over at Fire Station 2, October, November timeframe and Police Department substantial completion January, February of 2022. Any questions for the schedule? All right, the ACL. Um, you'll notice that uh, the uh, uh, temp facility restoration jumped down from that long-term number that we're carrying. It went up uh, roughly 78,000 from what we had last month. We're hoping to uh, diddle that number down, uh, but that's a worst case if we have to junk everything Nobody wants to salvage anything. Um, and we just do our, our, our demo and restoration. So um, <laughs> the only other uh, two items really of note on there are the site entrance modifications. Those are the gates. Uh, we expect that number to come down. KBA is working on a revision for consigli to price. And then there are some mechanics bay revisions on the Police Department Mechanics Bay, adding some hose reels, pressure washer, hookups, et cetera. Does anyone have any questions with the ACL? Uh, question. Uh, you said that the temporary facility restoration price went down or up? Up. It was 300,000 300, last month. And, it's, and why, why did it go up by 78,000? Because the, 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 the estimate uh, wasn't wasn't sufficient to cover every, when I originally did the estimate, I, I, there were a couple of assumptions I made. One was that the trailers would go back with the sprinklers and things like that uh, still in them. Uh, Modulis has not accepted that. So we may have to pull that stuff out. Um, I also uh, had expected that the uh, demo inside the tent was covered, it was not, that's an extra. So those couple of items, uh, uh, plus all the other stuff we have to do. So as I said, this is a worst case. We're hoping a lot of the material will be, um, will be able to reuse at some point. I'll need to get with Barry and his folks, get them over there, decide if anything over there is they want is salvageable. I would think that the switch gear, the electric panels would be something that uh, they may be interested in, maybe even some of the mechanical equipment. So that doesn't get recovered down. into this project, right? Excuse me? That doesn't get recovered in this project. That's an expense that's expended, right? Co correct. But if we can salvage, if we salvage the stuff, it costs us less demo because our forces take it and take it to wherever they want to put it, to put it in storage, to save it for later, like the cameras. Matt will take so You're saying down. the effort to take them down disappears. So the cost comes down. Correct. It doesn't completely disappear, but it lessens. Okay. I have a question. Um, it sounds like 
an unreasonable position that the vendor of the trailers would not consider it a positive addition by having the um, sprinkler system in it. Agreed, uh, agreed, agreed, George. And that's what Consigli is trying to do. They, they have a meeting with them um, to bring them out and walk through and say, hey, you want to keep this? You want to keep this? Some of the sprinkler stuff will have to come out like the mains and stuff like that. But the over the overheads and all the, the actual heads and that piping and some of the electrical yeah, electrical and things of that nature, um, we're hoping to convince them that it is a positive for them, and they'll want to uh, they'll want to take it. But their initial stance was no, we want them back in the condition we gave them to you. Yeah, of course, hoping that we'll leave them there and they'll have a benefit to their own. Yeah, well, you you're not you're not too far off on that. George. I'm, I'm sure. Okay. Yep. yep. All right. Yep. Moving on. We're ready for the voting item, Stuart. Okay. So I have a couple of things. You've got credit. Okay. Um, the list that you have, Catherine, I'm going to start with the change order 26. So Ken, the change order 26. <laughs> You can go, you go in whatever order you, you want to go in, Stuart, and I'll follow along. Okay, because I think we got to do the change order first. We don't have to, but that's fine. Let's, let's do that first, and why don't you just walk through that. Okay. Uh, we've got the electric and security revisions at Fire Station 2. Uh, that came down about ten or 11000 from from last month on the final pricing. The site wall exit gate, uh, we've, uh, um, I think it was the steel uh detailer that fabric that uh coined the phrase uh, the great wall of needham um that's the wall at the carport uh pd asked for a exit gate in that wall uh for releasing prisoners rather than walking them out through the front lobby so that's the pricing to install that that item february covid costs a little under 10 grand and we've been carrying approximately uh 4,000 a week. So that's a little bit of a plus. Masonry plates at Fire Station 2 to carry the brick on the roofs. And this is the big one, a uh, pot rack in decon at Fire Station 2 for a whopping $387. I have a total here of 128,000 and 192. And you have 492. What's the correct number? I thought, was, I thought it was 492. Hang on. I gotta go to my Erwin, you have a question? Yeah. Uh, just to confirm that these were previously on the ACL. Or um, is there anything? The pot, I think the pot one might be new from last month. Well, yeah, I'm not too worried about the pot. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the other ones, the other ones were, I believe, yes. Hey Ken, that number is right. 128,492 is the right number. Okay. Thank you, Keith. I have a dumb question. Go ahead, George. <laughs> which no, is, dumb no dumb question. Which, which is, which is, um, with things changing, um, not not completely for the better, but continue to to have less uh, of a COVID effect. Are, are we going to see those monthly costs going down at all? No, they'll actually go up because what will happen is the buildings become enclosed and things like doors and countertops get installed, there's more cleaning involved. You have to wipe down all the common surfaces daily, um, door handles coming into the building, et cetera. So we, uh, I anticipate, and we're gonna have two buildings really with interiors as opposed to one. So I anticipate we'll be uh, getting up to that roughly $16,000 a month uh, once, the, uh, you know, once we get, get going into the, uh, late spring, early summer. So unless, we have to assume we have to assume we, that we we have to do the cleaning, even until, though people aren't getting the virus at the correct. same rate until, they were. Until the state until the state rescinds the construction regulations for construction sites, we have to continue to do it. Okay. Okay. So is the number four ninety two or one ninety two? Yeah, Keith confirmed it's 492. 
Correct. Okay. So Catherine, it was it, that's I'm going to go with this number here, Catherine. So I'm going to put forth the change order 26 or $128,492. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Richard. Any questions? See none, hear none coming to the vote. Roll call. Richard. Aye. George. Aye. Erwin. Aye. Jean. Aye. Chief Condon. I I you. you might you might have to wave again. I no, I, I think I heard him. I said aye, no. Look at that. That's brilliant. We got him Thank back. God. There we go. Chief Schiller. Aye. Thank you. And the chair is aye. Okay, great. Uh, the next invoice I'm going to put forth is the Consigli Rec 26 through February for $1,553,069.56. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Erwin. Any questions? Seeing none, hearing none coming to the vote. Roll call. Richard. Aye. George. Aye. Erwin. Aye. Gene. Aye. Chief Condon. Aye. Chief Schlittler. Aye. The chair is aye. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next invoice is for Castle Booze for February 2021 services coming out of the architecture budget. $17,930.80. Do I hear a second? Second it. Thank you, George. Any questions from anybody? Seeing none, hearing none coming to the roll call. Richard. Aye. George. Aye. Erwin. Erwin. Did we lose Erwin? Erwin on. Raise your hand, Erwin. <laughs> Let me see if I, he raised his hand. Okay, good. So I, um, Gene. Aye. And Chief Condon. Aye. Chief Schliller. Aye. And the chair is aye. Okay. I'm going to put forth three invoices um, together coming out of the FF&E budget. The first one is Hillcrest Glass for conference table top glass for $1,888. Next one is Robert Lord Chair Arms for $241.30. And Robert Lord Company Install Shelving is the third one for $775. Total of $2,904.30. Do I hear a second? Seconded. Thank you, George. Any questions? Okay, coming to the roll call. Richard. Aye. George. Aye. Erwin. Aye. I can see it. All right. <coughs> Dean. Aye. Uh, Chief Condon. Aye. Chief Schlittler. Aye. And the chair is aye. Okay. Uh, the last uh, segment is a number of invoices I'll group together coming out of the miscellaneous budget. Um, the first one is for pods um, for $114.99. Another pods invoice for $114.99. Milton Cat for the generator rental for $2,612.50. Uh, Needham Police detail uh, for $356. UTS of Mass for $7,475 for materials testing. And UTS of Mass. Cool. Sorry. So that's a that's the typo. I just realized it said twenty seven thousand four seventy five. Okay, I said seven thousand four hundred seventy five. Correct. correct. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Um, the next one in this grouping is UTS of Mass for materials testing, four thousand two hundred eighty dollars. And then the last two, uh, the first of the last two is Wrist Frost Shumway for commissioning services for nine hundred fifty nine dollars. And the last one of that is two thousand six hundred dollars with wrist frost shoe for commissioning services as well total of eighteen thousand five hundred twelve dollars and 48 cents do i hear a second second thank you gene any questions hearing none seen come not to the 
sorry, coming to the vote, roll call. Richard? Aye. George? Aye. Erwin? Great, thumbs up. Gene? Aye. Chief Condon? Aye. Chief Schlittler? Aye. And the chair is aye. And that's all the voting items. Um, just as a matter of uh, principle, if anybody has any issues, I know there's some times that the uh, uh, microphones may not work. Um, I just ask everybody if there's any issues with the vote to please raise that. I think we're a committee that knows each other fairly well and are responsible. I don't think there's any issue out there, but just want to make sure if there is any objections to please voice them. Um, otherwise, I think we're okay. Um, that covers all the invoices. Is there anything else for the public safety complex, Ken or Steve? Quick question. George? Um, the um, uh, KBA credits, is there an explanation behind that? Uh, the, second, the second one doesn't exist. We already did that one. The uh, oh, wow. 21707 is for funds for uh, um, soils, soils inspections that weren't expended. We had a PO for uh, 40,000 or whatever it was. And uh, we, we, don't, we don't need the, uh, the extra money. So it's just getting credited back. Just paperwork. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. It's not a voting item, correct? Well, it should actually be a voting item. I guess I forgot to put it on the sheet. Okay, so, so we should vote that item in, please. Yes. Well, if it those. was if it was credited as part of PSS, <coughs> and we voted it in earlier, then we should vote it out now. Right. Okay. So is the voting item the twenty one thousand, or is it yes. both together? Yeah. No. The the uh, the fourth we determined after I had done the agenda that. Uh, P, the credit for PSS 34 had already been credited back, back in, I think it was August. August. Okay. So I'll put forth a vote for the credit on PSS 19, the $21,707.50. It's actually PSS 45. It's crediting PSS 19. It's a separate, it's a new PSS in other words. Yeah, it's a new PSS 45. Okay, so I'll stand corrected. So I'll put forth a PSS credit 45 to go against PSS 19 for $21,707.50. Do I hear a second? second? Second. I think it was George first. All right, George, thank you. Yep. Any questions? Hearing none. Coming to the roll call, Richard. Aye. George. Aye. Erwin. Aye. Gene. Aye. Chief Condon. Aye. Chief Schlittler. Aye. Chair is aye. Okay. Anything else on this, Catherine or Ken? No, sir. Okay. Great. Well, with that, I will close out the public safety agenda item. And we will, before so thank we, you very much. Go ahead. Before we leave, I just wanna yep. have the committee look again. Ken, can you put up the, uh, the last page of the budget? Last page of the budget, okay, hang on. I gotta, I gotta, gotta, gotta manipulate the view here. All right, now let's go back to Zoom. Share screen. Where's the budget? There it is. Okay. Okay. Um, so what? I just want to update the committee where we are. Um, Ken is showing bottom line of a million, a million thirty-eight thousand one hundred six um, remaining after we 
seek the 1.7 million. So we're looking at 10 months down the road at if we use the 80,000 a month, which I think is conservative, it would indicate that we've got a surplus of around $238,000 at the end of the day. Um, just wanna keep the committee informed as to how we're, we are in tracking uh, the, uh, the burn rate and the, uh, the closure on the project. Still um, not a lot of, in my opinion, that's still not a lot of contingency. Steve? I think it's plenty. That's assuming we don't burn 80,000 a month. I don't think we're going to burn 65,000 a month. Okay. So if we, if we spend all the anticipated costs and we do 80,000 a month, we have 200,000 left. If we do only 65,000 instead of 80,000, uh, that's another 15,000 a month. Yeah. That, uh, so that'd that, bring us up to around four. So somewhere between 200 and 400,000 we'll have left. I, which is, I anticipate that, yes. Which is not a huge cushion. No, it, it's your perspective. So if it, I just want to make sure I see it because right now you're, just, you're not showing it on this, but if you take the 80,000 burn, total that would be 880,000, correct? Against the 1.038 million? 800,000, Stuart. Okay, you take the 800,000 off the 1.038. Right. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Chair, one question, uh, and that is, uh, um, it looks like the uh, special town meeting warrant will include the uh, 1.7, and I was wondering what the status is vis-a-vis -vis the finance committee. Um, the, I think it's April 17th, correct, Steve? Yeah, the, I think the finance committee doesn't seem to be scrutinizing that. They're waiting until the, they have to review every, every uh, warrant article. Right. And they put us on the agenda for the 17th of April, which is, or the, which is just before they uh, stamp off on their okay. um, commentary on the, on the warrant articles. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, last call. All right. And with that, thank you to the user group and to everybody on public safety. Um, we'll turn our attention to the agenda item for the solar at Jack Cogswell, and that's going to be you, Steve Gentile, correct? Yes, that'll be me. I'll bring in Karis as well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> hey, Carex. Um, all right. Um, just to let you know that the uh, the TCO is being extended until May thirty first um, through the planning board. Um, the project, uh, the RTS consolidation is still in hold um, with the land court. So we're still waiting for that. That's been a drawn out process. Um, also, I'll just let you know, I'm adjusting the budget downward for the uh, BMS installation at the uh, Jack Cogswell building. We're gonna be using the town electrician uh, for uh, the electrical portion. And uh, that brings the dollar amount under $10,000. But the main portion of the um, agenda tonight is the Jack Cogswell Solar. Um, and the main development that we've had has been that uh, we met with, uh, we, we submitted the drawing set and the application mm -hmm. to Eversource, and that was being reviewed for a series of weeks. And um, they recently called us for a Zoom meeting 
and that was attended by Hank and uh, Steve Weir from Weston and Sampson and Ryan Boyd uh, from uh, Eversource. And it went well, they had a few technical questions. Uh, I think they were answered. And the basic understanding of that meeting was that we're in good shape basically uh, at the end of March to move towards an interconnection service agreement, which is an ISA, which is basically the formal um, connection between the town and the Eversource to get into an agreement for um, solar at Jack Cogswell. Um, there could be a few surprises before the end of March, but if we did have a, a green light, the main point would be that the town manager would sign the ISA. And so we know that there's been some resistance from finance and select board um, at, of various degrees. And so the question will be uh, how to proceed. And um, as it's noted um, here, we can proceed without any obligation or uh, risk. We'll know by the end of March if there's more cost, but without obligation for the next uh, 12 months, we can. that's an open-ended uh, option for the town to engage in. Um, so anticipating uh, that knowledge, we re-enlisted um, Beth Greenblatt from Beacon Integrated uh, associates and uh, she redid her analysis from before. Um, so um, basically if, if I'm looking at the chart in April of 2020, um, there were three scenarios, uh, best, worst and conservative. And these were based on the um, interest rates pre predominantly. Um, so in the best scenario, uh, this year, uh, in March, the benefit over 25 years after legal costs would be $400,000. Uh, last year, that was only approximately $300,000. So we've moved up $100,000 in this uh, net metering scenario. It seems like we've ruled out on-bill uh, crediting um, for various reasons. Then you look down to the next piece, the worst case scenario based on interest rates we were lose we would lose fifteen thousand. Previously, that was one hundred and thirteen thousand. So again, we're in a better spot by one hundred thousand dollars. And then the conservative um, scenario, um, which is kind of the medium position, uh, probably realistic um, between conservative and best is probably the most realistic to be looking at, is um, a two hundred and thirty eight thousand dollar benefit over twenty five years. And last, when we we're looking at that last spring, it was only $140,000. So the net metering equation has improved. And I guess um, if we're looking at uh, something like, um, well, I'll go to this chart. This this is a chart we looked at before. Um, where a little bit, yeah. Can you see that? A little bit more. I don't know if other people can see it, okay. Yeah, I'll say that we're here at the system impact study requirement. So we're starting that. And by the end of March, we'll have that information. And if we don't need to spend more money to upgrade the grid or the connections, the transformers or whatever's on the street, um, that will be a no. And then we ex execute the inter uh, connection agreement, the ISA. And then after that, um, we have 18 months to apply for net metering. Um, so then we uh, go forward, but I think the main nature of this um, discussion is uh, to update the uh, PBBC um, about the cost and the concerns about cost and the impact that financing has on this decision. I think in the uh, Weston and Sampson analysis, if we were paying cash for the solar project, we'd have a payback at, um, 11 years is what they said. But here, if you look at this uh, chart that uh, Hank had made, you, you jump down to the bottom here and um, total project cost is uh, $935,000 coming off of $500,000 to construct it. So you're seeing that the, the bulk of it, uh, I would say we're saying that the financing is $385,000. So that's a big uh, number to consider for financing, but we don't have much of a choice. Um, 
Can you, I'm sorry, can you go back up to the, the, the worst case and best case scenarios? Because everything's improved this year and, and the financing assumptions haven't changed, correct? So what's, what's improved the numbers? Um, I think it was an upgrade of what the, what the rates are in the net metering. I can find out in detail. We do have the, oh, Hank's raising his hand. Do you want to speak, Hank? Yeah, I, um, at least in this past year, we've actually utilized more energy than anticipated at the facility. And when we use more energy, um, we, um, we basically, um, that, that power is coming off the roof rather than our buying that power uh, because about 90% of the production on this, this roof would be um, sold off and sent back for net metering. And the return on investment for net metering and smart is less than that if you, if you use it on site. So will those same um, power demands remain after the COVID era? Not quite sure. Um, but that, that I think had the biggest impact. In other words, we're saving more money um, by using more, more in the building. Now, if the town ever had electric vehicles in the next 20 years at the RTS and was recharging them here, then that would improve the benefit even more. Um, although likely it would, uh, we would probably want to look at battery um, backup um, reserve, if you will, in order to balance that out further. But um, at Sunita Williams, for instance, we use, um, I won't say 100%, but the, the power produced on the roof is only about 40% of what's consumed within the building. Here, the initial estimate was we were only utilizing about 10%. And in, in the, um, this past year, we would have used about 15 to 20%. Okay. Um, Mr. Hank, so I think I have listed under the issues, the consensus of town to proceed, consensus of town officials, we know there's challenges there. Um, the prospect of town meeting, when we say that, we're talking about November, not, not this spring, obviously. Um, the signing of the ISA. And um, we know that there were liability concerns uh, with um, town council, Dave Tobin. Um, at this point, we know those were addressed at Sunita Williams. So uh, we have to determine if that's uh, a precedent that's going to continue or uh, that was a one-off. Um, and I, I just said that the financing uh, is a major contributor to this, that we know that certain members of the uh, fin uh, select board had concerns about the effects of financing on the town. Yeah, but I think that there's a couple of things, but I see George, your hand is up. I'm just going to interrupt him and let George ask a question. May I ask my question now? Yes. Um, I, I, I guess I just need a little clarification. Um, and either either Hank or Steve can answer this, I'm sure. Um, so it sounds to me like in, in layman's terms, um, Eversource has agreed that they will buy the power from a solar installation if we were to install it. And that purchase of the power uh, would be summarized by the table, which would say that it could it could be uh, uh, that we actually lose a little money in the worst case, or make a little money in the in the best case. Correct. That, that's correct. Once we sign the ISA, um, then the signing of that ISA means that they would be receiving the power ex, any excess power that we produce on the roof. Okay, but but in in order to let's say explain this to people at town meeting or or other people in the town, um, in essence, if we take the best case scenario, um, over twenty five years, we'd we'd uh, essentially uh, save three hundred ninety five thousand dollars. 
correct? That's what's projected, yes. The best. Or in the worst case, we could break even or lose $15,000. I mean, 15,000 is kind of a break even. That's right? correct, yeah. And so um, I, I'm looking for justification as to why we should spend the money to install a solar system if all we could do is break even over 25 years. Well, I, I think there's a, I, I, you wouldn't want to spend good money off the bat. I can understand that concept, but I think there's a process. I think there's more about process at this point where you're saying, okay, say you garnered the support in town over the summer and then you came to town meeting in the autumn and then um, you got went out to bid. I mean, you signed the ISA and you got the bids, then you'd have the price from the bids which you could say, is this still a, are we still in play here, or is, are we knocked out of the um, out of the competition by um, just high bids, or maybe? Well, we're I, getting... I, I understand all those things. I'm simply saying that if if you were to uh, have bids such that uh, you show it to be, uh, let's say, a fifteen thousand dollar loss in twenty five years, um, you wouldn't have any justification for for doing this. Right. right, but I don't think you know the, the bids, but also you don't know, I don't think we know the, the most critical part is the borrowing rate. If, if we look at uh, Beth's uh, criteria for best, worst, and conservative, that comes down to the borrowing rates that Dave um, um, Davison was what we were working with on. The, and I can scroll through, through those in the uh, presentation. Yeah but, if, yeah, but I think I think what I'm hearing George say is that even if it was a twenty-five thousand dollar, even if it was you know a twenty-five thousand dollar plus sign, um, you know, unless you get up into the big dollars, what's what's the real root purpose of the town doing something like this? And I don't know if we want to get in that debate solely, but I think what you're saying, George, is 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 what is the incentive to do it? And I think it would just be the green movement within the town. Yeah, and and I think the the comment that Hank made is a very good one. I think. If we really, if we realistically look at uh, converting a fleet of of, uh, of ve town vehicles to electric vehicles, this would be a perfect place to charge them. Um, and and you've got a solar system where you want to use more electricity, um, and so you'd essentially say to everybody, okay, when you need to be recharged, you go over to this building, and that's where you get recharged. And so you're actually using the the, the electric power that you're generating through the solar operation, which makes the whole system more efficient for the town. You're not having to go to Eversource and say, now I need to buy electricity to charge my cars. Uh, it's, you know, so from that point of view, obviously that's something in the future that, in my opinion, the town will probably go to at some point to have a fleet of electric vehicles as opposed to, to gas vehicles. Not all of them, but, but a lot of them. The automobiles, etc. Um, Hank, is that what you're implying here? Yeah, I, I think that. Well, you, you've all heard the news that uh, GM will only be producing electric vehicles as of 2030. 2030, and um, the oh, transition, the transition in the next 10 years. I mean, they, they'll. They'll still be servicing gas vehicles. They'll still be serving, servicing hybrid vehicles. Um, but the town will begin looking at which um, types of vehicles make the most sense to transition to electric. Um, and it, it might well be that some of the uh, SUVs and, uh, and some of the light, light body trucks would be some of the first pieces of equipment to transition. Likewise, vans and um, vans and some school buses, I think, that have very set um, mileage on a daily basis. Um, I think those will transition. I think the heavy equipment will be some of the last to transition. Uh, would, we, would, would Hank, would we consider uh, Purchasing batteries and putting them in this building, and charging batteries with the with the solar uh, from the roof. Yeah, I haven't. We haven't looked at the economics of that. 
um, as you have, I'm sure, read, the, the cost of batteries, like the cost of solar panels, is just been dropping um, significantly. And, and will continue, in my opinion. Yeah, and the, and the efficiencies will increase as well. So um, the town really misses out that a private developer has, or a private landowner, um, town can't take advantage of any of the tax rebates. Uh, right. However, there are programs within the state that can give the town um, grants for the purchase of electric vehicles. Yeah, not not a, not a lot. Offset that. But but in any event, I think you know here's here's an opportunity for the town to implement some of their green strategic thinking. I keep wondering where that is, but <laughs> uh, some of their supposed green strategic thinking, um, and uh, and and this would be a good opportunity to do that, uh, even though they're not going to use it, and it may may not provide a lot of profitability over the first 10 years of its life, but it might after that. Uh, just, just a thought. I, you know, I'm trying to put together in my own mind how I could justify this to people in the town as to why we would want to do it. Um, and so the other question that I had that relates to this somewhat is um, uh, who, who is uh, communicating with both the uh, town council and select board regarding whether or not this sort of thing is desirable. I know from a, from a conceptual point of view, it's desirable, but I think we all have to come to agreement that we're willing to spend that amount of money and somebody's got to sponsor this in the town. Uh, I think most of the selectmen thinks it's a great idea to put solar there, but it's gonna come down to who's gonna, who's gonna stand up and say, I wanna spend this amount of money, even though we're not gonna make a lot of money or potentially not make a lot of money. It's, it's, it's something that has to happen. And, and we're not even through the, the uh, legal aspects of it. So I guess the question is, who is pushing that side of it? And I guess that's a question for either Steve or Stuart. Well, I, I think Stuart, you, you were talking about gaining consensus through first step would be a chair's meeting, but it won't happen between now and annual town meeting, but hopefully it would occur prior to special town meeting in the fall. Yeah, so I think George, the, the way I, I see it is, is that I don't think it's our consensus as much as, and, and I think we this should be uh, brought up, and I do see Erwin, you have a question, and Natasha, you have a question, so I won't lose sight of that, but um, I think we as a committee should evaluate the ISA, and the basic question is, can we keep this process moving along, locked into the respective rates, or in a situation that allows the town to make a decision? Um, if there's no cost to the ISA, um, and there's no voting on tonight that we have to spend any money to execute an ISA, I think that's good. And I, and I think that the next step to your answering your question is, I think there needs to be a chair meeting that needs to be put forth to um, the, the select board and, and who can make the decision to move forward. I don't see this solar in the context of this project. And I don't know how the rest of the committee feels, but I, do, I believe that we have done what we should be doing, which is can, sol can it be solar ready and can it be done? And we've actually gone above and beyond and we've actually positioned for the town to be able to take advantage of this. But from a consensus building, I think it's really um, talking to the, the chairs and seeing who can actually put forth. I don't think we would ever uh, spend the money without some outside statement coming into this committee to say it is now within scope to go spend that money. I don't know if I fully answer the question, George, but that's. But I, I think there is some, a little bit of ambiguity. But I think it starts with the uh, the chairs group and then the finance committee and 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 uh, collectively, who does have the authority to make that go forward. So essentially, you're saying, let's finish off the the paperwork part of the project, and make our recommendations to 
the select board and then whatever money we have left, we rescind it and, and let somebody else uh, uh, determine whether or not we, we have a project here. I, I'm not sure about that. I think what we have to do is run in parallel, right? Let's do our work to get this so it can be utilized. At the same time, go to the select board and, and ask and present the situation. I think the committee would recommend it, but the committee, I don't think, can make that decision to spend the money. If I think it could, but what I, I don't, I'm not sure I agree, but we can talk about that. But I think the part that I see is that we don't have to necessarily rescind the money right this second. We rescind the money when it's all finished. But I don't know if we could spend that amount of money, 500,000, whatever, you know, even if it's 200,000 or more. I just feel it's kind of out of the um, almost the four corners of the scope. I, I'm interested in what the committee says, but I think it's kind of out. It needs something from the externalist committee to say to spend that money. I think we would be raising some real red flags if we went and made that decision and spend it. I think we need consensus from the town. And who that is, is select board, is the finance committee. I think we need that to be told. And if we're told within in the confines of, of the next couple of months, you know, three, four months, we could we could use the funds. George, if they if we don't get consensus, I think we do have to rescind and let them make the decision of whether they want to go forward with that. Do you have a different opinion? Uh, no, we, we made the decision at Sunita Williams, but we made it uh, consciously with the support of both FinCom and the select board. Yeah. Uh, we could do the same thing here, but right. I think I'd, I'd like it to be, because it's not obvious that the gain is substantial like it was at Sunita Williams, yeah. um, I, I think um, I, I would like to see them come out in favor of this and, and the same with income before we try to push it forward. Okay. Richard, I see your hand, but I've got Erwin, Natasha, and then you, okay. if that's okay. Do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear yes. you, Erwin. Oh, okay. I'm having trouble with my microphone. I just wanted to make a few comments. Uh, I don't want to take up too much more time, but looking at that table, to me, 15,000 as the worst case over 25 years is is pretty much a zero financial risk. And I think judging this project has to be put in a bigger context of where are we headed as a country with regard to energy. And even if it's just a small contribution, all the trend lines, as you indicated, are moving towards electric, are moving towards improved efficiency, improved battery technology. So even if it's just a minimal gain financially, I think environmentally and just to look at our future energy uh, policy as a town, as a state, as a country, um, this is something that we should really consider as being worthwhile to do. I know we're, we're not making that decision right now, but I don't see a lot of risk, uh, at least financially based on the latest data. And I think all the trend lines are pointing in a, in a uh, in a good direction for the future. I think just, the, just my opinion on that. Yeah, I think the big topic there, Erwin, at least my recollection of various conversations, is that it's the money. It's you know if, if there's all the money in the world, not a problem. But it, with limited funds, you take five hundred thousand dollars here, you're taking it away from something over here that's desperately needed and. I know what you. I know what you're saying. But there's, but, a, but there's a payback. Would, would even the conservative? There's a payback. So if you're going to spend money, that's going to and you're going to get it paid back in five, ten years, then you're really not. It's really not that, a, a poor. Yeah, expansion. but I think the issue is with the other projects and other demands in the town. And when you look at the financial committees uh, and the town's, ob, you know, committed obligation of debt service and of total debt relative to budget. Now you're, you're already punching up against that. I, and I'm not gonna speak for them, but I just believe that what's been, been, been said is that, is, that would get, 
that you got limited funds, you got limited borrowing, you got all the borrowing power in the world, but do you want to crack the ceiling of the debt uh, service and the total outstanding debt? Um, but anyways, I'll stop there. Are you all set, Earl, in your comments? Yeah, I'll let someone else speak, sure. Natasha, I know you're next, and then we'll go to you, Richard. Thanks. So um, I guess one question that I have is the ROI, based on what we do, I have two questions, but the first one is the ROI, based on what we were just talking about and um, what we were talking, what Hank was talking about, the fleets that are coming in the future and all that, was that taken into account, that projection of where we're heading and any new buildings being net zero, which is gonna be state mandated in the near future? I'm just trying to figure out where the ROI was coming from. Was Did that take all of that kind of future projection into it? No, no, no. That, we, no, no, that was Hank um, uh, considering what could be in the future, but this was just the use of Jack Cogswell building uh, pre-COVID and then the COVID experience of expanding the occupancy increased the electrical usage. So the tank was saying okay. that that improved the uh, outcome of the <laughs> ROI. Because I think I would do projections of realistic things that, you know, that could be coming. Um, because right now I'm working on three net zero buildings. I've been working with AI Massachusetts um, with that bill that's that the governor was, was reviewing and um, the, everything's going to be headed to electrified. So the ROIs, if you're planning it on today, it's not going to be that way in five years. It's going to be completely different. And um, I agree with Erwin. I think we're being short-sighted. This is a huge opportunity for the town. But I guess another question that I have is the number one thing everywhere right now, the AIA everywhere is environment, right? Because we have being carbon neutral and net zero because um, we, we're going to have no choice. So the question that I have is, is there an environmental strategy for the town? And does this fit into the environmental strategy for the town? I just don't want to be short-sighted. I know it's but, money up front, but there's like so many opportunities for this to, to, to pay itself back so quickly if we have a strategy of how we're going to achieve it. And we may be forced to have a strategy soon anyway. I don't know. Is there, what, is there a town? I, don't, I think that, I think that uh, that's a great point because I think what happened was this was, we didn't have, we didn't formally have this. And we started discussing earlier, um, can this be a case study of sorts, not to solve the problem, but to bring the questions to the table. So it was very foggy in the beginning, which direction we're going in. And this was kind of funneling the attention to how you get this done. And that's where we are now. And there was a certain point, even now that when Eversource came back to us, somebody said, well, now we've got, we figure we can go forward, but why waste our time and energy with something that the town doesn't want to, if we're not going to get the money in. And the fact is we're in a good position because those number, the financial numbers improved since last spring and we don't have a commitment for the next 12 months. So we can talk about this all through the summer and um, see where it takes us. There's no obligation. So this was just a stopping point conversation to say, what do we want to do next? And this project's been like that to funnel that conversation. Hank, I was going to go to Richard, but did you want to add oh. to that? Well, I'll, I'll just respond to her quest Natasha's question about an overall strategy. Um, the town does did enter into the green communities um, and is so designated, and Karis can speak to that, but she emphasized to me that that is looking at conserving energy largely. That's stretch code mostly. Yeah. Not net zero, but the town, the, the, I mean, we're, there's a bill. It's going to be passed, if not this year, next year, or the following year on net zero. Everything is going to be net zero. So. But the stretch code, yeah, the stretch code keeps on improving, but it's not net zero, but we're headed in that direction. Sorry, Hank, I didn't mean to. Well, I, I think that as we look at, um, and, and Karis can, can illuminate you as to what our illumination is doing, hmm. um, but there certainly are uh, statistics that, and energy reduction that have been um, advantageous. The RTS solar, has been phenomenally advantageous compared to what our initial projections were. And that, that's direct money coming into the town um, due to the net metering associated with that project. Um, I don't think we could ever repeat, um, well, we, we would need a large land area 
to put down additional solar panels in order to repeat yeah. that success. But um, Karis, do you want to talk about some of the other initiatives that the town is um, going through? Um, sure, and I'll, I'll sort of just preface this with um, when I was interning with the town 15 years ago, we were looking at sustainability. So I think it's been an area of interest for quite a long time. Um, as Hank mentioned, we are a green community and we have prior to becoming a green community, I think prided ourselves in continuing to invest um, internally in making energy improvements within our own infrastructure. Um, but that being said, I do believe that there's been an approach where we're looking at um, more proven technologies when it comes to dealing with um, energy efficiency. So I think to Hank's point, we did a solar array at the um, RTS, but we did it once that technology had become a much more um, frequent standard in its utilization and not sort of at the emerging um, utilization of solar, sort of part of this second wave of energy efficiency in the early 2000s. So um, there's been an interest, I believe, I was gonna look up quickly, but I believe it is in the select board goals um, to improve the sustainability of the town. So I do believe it's been a focus, but I don't know if there's been one singular targeted policy. And one of the things I want to, I, so I was on a green, on the green communities about 10 years ago, whenever, for an entire year. And it didn't pass town meeting because we didn't have the correct uh, communication of what it was, um, which was really kind of disappointing. So I feel like unless we get the right communication for this and can vet it correctly, this is going to fall flat again. So we need to get, we need to really, you know, put together if there is a plan or we need to figure out if the select board has a plan to make it a bigger objective and to make a good case for it. I think if we just go in and we're like, well, it's going to cost more money and we think we're going to, I think we have to have like a plan for this because this is the wave of the future and the wave of the future is like in a year. <laughs> I mean, but I think it's going to be really hard to sell to anyone, especially the FinCom, FinCom, if we don't have a strategy and if we don't do, you know, have a lot of background information and, and true. And um, one of the things that I, Stuart, I sent you something today, um, uh, Michael Grice and, and Ed Quinlan had been wanting, they've been asking me for a long time to see if they could come and talk to us about sustainability, just in the environment in general and energy, most mostly. Um, and I don't know if that's something that we can, you know, can put in. in yeah, I, wanted, I wanted to cover that in the uh, other business. Yeah, so I just wanted to throw that out there because I, I think I think we need to vet this a little better and not just about the money because I don't necessarily know if the money, you know, if we can project the money correctly. Yep. And I, I just want to make sure, and I'll go to you, Richard, next, um, is that I just think as a committee and our scope of responsibility, um, you know, is is to present the capability in this situation of what we have and what we could do. But I don't think it's, I do think it's outside of our purview to, it's outside of our scope to vote in that kind of money to spend. Just my view, but we can talk about it more. But Richard, I wanna make sure that you get your piece and we'll come back to others. Sure, sure. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, I think um, many of the points that I would have raised, I think have, have been um, very well articulated by uh, the previous speakers. I think I would just reiterate the point that, that, that you made and that is that, um, in order to go down this path, I think we need a cl need clear direction from the town, the policymakers, which is the select board, as to um, what their vision is with respect to um, the potential use of, of uh, this facility for uh, charging of electric vehicles and that sort of thing. Uh, I, I just don't feel we, I, I'm not, I would not be comfortable going um, down this path without, again, some clear direction from the uh, from the board as to uh, as to their thoughts regarding that they're thinking, and it may be that there is something in the works. We uh, we don't know. We're speculating about uh, the trend toward uh, uh, electric vehicles, but we really don't know, and we just need to have that that conversation with everyone. And I agree with Natasha's point that uh, really uh, you have to 
you really have to, to achieve buy-in, you really have to have a clear goal. And that's all part of that process. There has to be a dialogue. I do say though, at the meantime, for now, uh, if we can continue uh, the process without incurring any additional uh, costs or liability to the town, I think that's a good thing. Uh, obviously up until the point of no return, then we have to make a decision at that point, but that's somewhat down the road. And that will buy us, we, we can buy ourselves some time by continuing this process in the meantime. And I think that's what I'm hearing is that that um, because we don't have to expend anything now, we want to continue down this path. The ISA seems to be the next logical piece um, that would allow us to to, to lock in um, the proper rates at, in parallel, going to the select board and making sure that that they hear the opportunity. When we reviewed this back in the fall, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Steve, um, but um, I know the other concern that was looming was the fact that this building could be producing so much, we would only be using 10%, you know, even 15% if, if because of more usage now, is that there's such a high surplus. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's looked as one building. We, it doesn't take into consideration the whole town. So there could be a situation where we're almost perceived as being a, an electric generator making money versus a nonprofit going against all our accounts. I don't pretend to know all that, but I think that's another financial piece that's hanging out there um, in Dave Davidson's mind. And we have to, we have to close the, the loop on a few things, but I think what I'm hearing is let's go to the select board, make sure they hear what we've done and, and the ad advantage of doing this. And then I think other than that, it has to be some part of the town has to come back to us and give us a clear guidance that says, you know, this is something you should go forward with. Otherwise, I'm, I don't feel comfortable. The rest of the committee may. We may decide to take a vote at some point. But I don't feel comfortable with the size dollar of investment that's sitting there that we should be taking that kind of without consensus externally. I ask one more question. Sure. Short one. Um, the, the question I have is, uh, I, I really don't believe, at least it hasn't been articulated to me, and I haven't found it anywhere, uh, a clear strategy for the town regarding um, this in any new buildings that we look forward to in the future. And, yeah. um, and one of the things that I guess I would strongly encourage us as a committee to do is to go to the select board and tell them how, how we feel that we don't have a strategy that we can work with even. Uh, it's, it seems like it's a one-off basis. You know, let's look at this uh, on this project. Let's look at this on this project. Somehow, I think we have to have a strategy that's well developed for for all of these issues, such as such as uh, uh, solar or any anything else, um, and and how we're going to proceed. And right now, I don't think we have that. We have we're we're a green community in words only. There's no action plan. I agree with Natasha and and Irwin and. I think we've discussed this before, and I think the only way to get some action is to, to go to, to the select board and kind of force the issue if we can. Okay. And that's, and that's, I will go to the select board, have that conversation. Is there anything else that you suggest or recommend at this stage? Um, or we can take it offline and have a discussion um, of how best to do it and bring it back to the committee. That was easy. I'd, I'd like to make one other comment. Um, in the, um, the, the budget update that was distributed, that Stephen distributed, I should note that there is out of the 7.765 million of total project funding, there's still an unencumbered contingency sum or unencumbered amount of 3.66 million. So um, as with Sunita, it would be possible to rescind, let's say all but a million of that um, while the discussion plays out. The longer we wait, um, the further we go down in the um, net metering categories. Um, we did, it was kind of strange on the equation. We, we dropped by one block and that worsened a little bit the financial analysis, but by 
utilizing more energy on the site, it actually overcame that. Um, so I, I think that we could, um, if FinCom asked us to rescind some amount of money, we could probably rescind 2.6 um, and still keep a million dollars for this discussion to continue. Steve Popper, do you have any comments? Yeah, Hank, I, first of all, I don't think those numbers are, are correct. I think we have not quite that number. Um, I don't think FinCom is interested in having us return the money. They're interested in us in closing the project and rescinding all of it. So I, I don't think pushing to rescind a portion really is, is the answer here. I think the answer has to follow the, the, the process that Stuart mentioned and having a discussion about the direction of uh, where we're going uh, and whether or not this is the best use of available funds that the town has that it could uh, bond for or use within its operating budget. I think there's the catch. I, I don't think the funds, the, the, what's in the contingency has been bonded. So in fact, there's nothing really on the table. If we had to use the contingency, they would have to go out and get money and bond it, I think. Um, but I won't speak for, for them. I just remember the conversation that we had before that everything relative to this building has been funded. Um, if we have to get more within the context of the overall funding for it, there would be an, there would have to be a financial transaction. Uh, Steve, you are correct. It, the contingency balance is 2.27 million after the change orders. The number I quoted was the original contingency. Okay, so at this stage, I'll, I'm gonna suggest that, that what, we've, what we've heard from Steve Gentile is that there's still a favorable pathway. There's still a favorable like, concept here. There's no significant cost to continue to pursue it. We have to get some consensus outside of this committee to make sure that, that um, if there is a financial event, um, we know what that decision would be. Correct? Correct. Any other questions or comments from anybody? George, your hand is still up. Do you? Oh, no. I'll take it down. Okay. Any other comments from anybody? So at this stage, Steve Gentile, we have a, um, what, an update at the end of March, the March 22nd meeting? Or is that? I, I think they said the April? end of March for the uh, decision from Eversource. So that might be premature. It would be more of a, I think it would be better to get that uh, response firmly from Eversource if we need to spend more money and then we'll present it. Um, it are we ready to send this ISA to town manager for signature? And what does that involve uh, to get that signature? I think that's a good kind of talking uh, a point of decision. Uh, are, we, are we still moving forward? What does it take to make that decision with um, consensus? Or do we need more time for consensus? Or are we ready to kind of say, this isn't something we're interested in? But having that ISA in hand at the end of March and that time after will be the good point to meet again. So we should target the uh, 12th of April meeting for an update on this to the committee. Right. Okay. Um, you have stars next to that, Catherine, on the 12th. Just side question here. Oh, um, the, the original meeting was um, scheduled for April 5th. And I believe um, Steve Popper and was suggesting that we move it to the 12th. Okay, so it's the on first the meeting in April. Okay, on the bottom of everybody's agenda, you'll see the meeting dates. Just check it, but that's why I was just looking. So the twelfth, I think Steve Gentile we target unless it goes to the fifth. Okay, um, with that, I will close out the. We will close out the solar at Jack Cogswell agenda item. Okay, all right. Um, the last, the second to last agenda item, and we're actually on time. Can you believe that, George? Hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Um, the highlights of 2020. Um, I asked Steve and, and team, I thought it would be, be good to um, hear back just on last year's work, where we started at the beginning of the year and, and where we ended up. I think it's a good recap to have um, for the committee um, to see where we are. And uh, I'll turn it over to you, Steve. Okay. Um, well, Stuart had asked me to sort of recap what we did in 2021, uh, 2020, and put together uh, a set of brief explanations as to, uh, or brief summaries of what we've done. I, I don't think I need to get into this one. We've this is, of course, the most active, um, the active project that we have right now. Um, but I think Ken has gone through it. Uh, in 20, we, uh, we did um, occupy Fire Station 1 uh, on, on schedule. Um, with that came the completion of the the, uh, of the communication system, which was quite involved and really a project on to itself, um, having uh, re-engineered the entire um, emergency and uh, communications between uh, police, fire, and dispatch. Um, We occupied the uh, uh, temporary quarters uh, so that fire station two construction could commence. Um, and we proceeded to demolish or, and relocate not only fire, the, uh, the auxiliary fire station, but the police department as well at Hillside allowing us to demolish the headquarters. Uh, and we're now fairly well into uh, the completion of the foundations, putting and started the superstructure last week at, at police headquarters. Um, Uh, Sunita Williams, which is really a, uh, a signature project uh, that was quite successful. I think the town has seen the, uh, um, the value of using good engineering and good architecture to complete a project that I think the town is um, it's a, it's a hallmark, it's a signature school for the town. Um, however, like any of the projects and we're gonna see it, the, the closeout, even though we occupied that school in 2019, we're still closing out the project and we're still in the process of closing it out with MSBA. So pr projects don't necessarily complete at the time when, um, when they're occupied. Um, and we're, Sunita Williams is a good example of that. Um, I wanted to get this in here. Hank gave me some information on the SMART program at Sunita. Um, he's calculated uh, that we have seen a benefit of, uh, to date of 70,000 plus uh, due to the solar generation there. And that project came along also with an auxiliary uh, type of effort, which took a lot of, of time and patience to create the outside play and walking trails, um, which is part of that project. I'm gonna run, just run through these quickly. Um, we had a number of other projects that were of, had some effort 
um, because again, the project, even though they were completed in 2019, like the Rosemary complex, we're still in, involved with various elements of, uh, of correcting warranty issues and, uh, and working on that project to uh, to eventually to close it out completely. Hopefully, I think we're going to see that shortly in 2021. Uh, Morrow Park Fieldhouse also opened in 2019, but is in um, underseeing uh, some elements of uh, upgrade. The acoustics were upgraded. Uh, we ran into some uh, performance issues on the uh, air handling units and that had to be corrected. Um, so these projects have kept Mike quite busy um, in addition to overseeing the, uh, the fire station two-ish efforts. Uh, Jack Cogswell, which Steve was, we've been just talking about and Steve's been involved in, um, is still ongoing with regard to the, the solar issue. I think most, I think Steve has completed the rest of it, um, except the closeout with planning because we are still struggling to get a consolidation um, approved uh, of all the parcels involved at that site. Um, recommissioning of all schools in the district. This was a sort of uh, obviously the result of uh, primarily of the pandemic that uh, we had to get involved in with, uh, uh, Steve has been involved in heavily supporting uh, facilities to work on the ventilation issues and develop a, a process by which um, all the areas, all the, all the rooms, spaces within the schools can meet the, uh, the standard for occupy, occupancy. And uh, so even though Steve has, uh, and we'll get into this uh, in, in a moment here, um, he's been on my team He's been primarily working to assist the uh, facilities. Um, and then also a, a couple of other projects that finished earlier that are just closed up in 2020 was the high school expansion and the Mitchell modulus. Um, We've had some effort, Mike has been primarily involved in with regard to the Ridge Hill uh, demolition. There is a warrant article to, I believe, to proceed with the demolition coming up at the Maytown meeting. Um, and if that passes, Mike would be involved with that project going forward. Um, so the other two big efforts that we had, which were non-construction, were the two studies, the Emory Grova study and the school master plan study. Um, at the moment, we're looking at um, determining whether or not we will get funding from CPC to start design at the annual town meeting. Uh, the town has elected at this particular juncture not to support the effort with uh, design funds. Um, so a discussion as to whether or not CPC will proceed and support that project, um, all of which uh, is important from the standpoint that the timeline, if we don't get funding, is going to be pushed out and further effort with regard to Emory Grover, just sustainability at the, that particular building uh, would, would be an issue that the town has to deal with. 
And finally, the school master plan study, which I think was uh, an eye opener for a lot of people. Um, this was a very comprehensive study that Doran Whittier undertook um, and was, we were very much, the department was very much involved with it, uh, trying to determine what is the correct educational planning for the town and what does that do to our facilities? And the outcome was, was um, to say the least, um, very invasive to what we have in place with regard to school facilities. And uh, the $250 million over seven year plan, D1 plan, was actually the least expensive plan on the table that was the outcome of that study. Um, and that obviously was an eye-opening event for a lot of people. And it's, a, it's an effort that we're going to have to, the town is going to have to wrestle with, um, whether it proceeds to take in all the considerations that uh, were part of that study or not. Um, so that in essence is a summary of what we've been doing, what we did in 2020. And before we go on, uh, I just wondered if there was any questions, any, any comments from the committee? Yeah, Steve, I, I'll jump in. Thank you for putting that together, Steve. Um, I, I just wanted to suggest that we do that and we do that on a, on a uh, yearly basis because I think we get so busy in these meetings, I think it's worth reflecting on the amount of work that Steve and his team do and the amount of work that the committee does in terms of addressing critical things for the town. And, and I have to say, you know, it's basically, other than the public safety building, um, which is big in itself. I'm not, not taking that away, but there's 10 other projects that consumed a, a, a significant amount of time. Not to mention, I think the school master plan was incredibly complex and still is a very complex issue. Um, so thanks, Steve. I, I just think as a committee, we should reflect on this and, and the amount of work that Steve and his team is doing as well as, as the responsibilities we have. And it's important to understand that as we go day in and day out in our meetings. At least I might be guilty. I know I go like this and I'm looking at it, but sometimes we just have to step back and say, what have we really done? And just making sure we're tracking to where we're going. So with that, I'll just turn it back to you, Steve, or if anybody else has comments. Erwin? First, first of all, that, that was phenomenal. And as a member of the committee, hopefully I speak to everybody that really makes me feel proud to be part of this. And I wanted to know, is is that presentation uh, on the town websites somewhere so that others can see it? Um, it's not. Um, Hank, do you have any suggestions? Uh, we certainly can embed it in our, in our uh, town uh, webpage but uh, I'm not sure where you would park it in the, on the town, you know, in the town website. I would just like uh, the town at large to be informed about all that we've done. I think well, it's a great. But we have a web page um, that uh, people can be directed to. Catherine is sort of the. Uh, what do they call it? The uh, monitor for that web page. Um, that's something we could do. Yeah, there's there's a different summary that's put into the annual town report. It's mostly verbal, um, and uh, at least a paragraph on each project recently completed or ongoing. Uh, this is this is a good summary as well. But yes, we, we could add it to our, our, our page on the town web page. Great. 
others? Okay, Steve, back to you. Um, yeah, so, you know, that sort of leads us to where we're going. And um, we've got, we've sort of, and that discussion has been taking place with FinCom and town manager. And we put together a little uh, couple of slides here that perhaps um, can talk to that particular issue. Um, can you Shall I share my web page? Yeah, if you could, Hank. So this is a, uh, a slide basically showing what we're projecting uh, in 2021 uh, physical year and moving forward into FY22 actually and uh, lapping into uh, uh, 23. So we, we were, we've got the two main construction projects. Uh, we're projecting those to be completed in the first half of FY23. Um, we've got, uh, now the hill, um, let me skip down to Ridge Hill. We've got the Ridge Hill demo demolition plan. Um, our effort, which I, I spoke briefly to, that will be closed out in uh, at the end of uh, that physical year, uh, end of that calendar year. Um, next uh, And that, that schedule is a little bit vague because of whether or not we hit a, uh, a demo delay or not. Um, and upon town meeting voting, right? And the town meeting voting. Uh, so this is premised on uh, town meeting voting. Uh, it starts with design, goes to bid and we're looking at possibly a six month uh, win demo window um, before we can start the actual demo. Uh, hillside restoration, um, that's an effort that uh, is turning into actually a bigger effort than we had anticipated. We're looking at well over a quarter of a million dollars to restore the just the uh, and get the site back to hopefully to the satisfaction of planning board. We do have a discussion with planning board on exactly what that uh, scope should be, which is um, something we're working on right now. And then we go down to the two studies, um, the Emory Grover building which again, whether or not um, a funding request, we believe a funding request from CPC will be made to initiate design. And what's laid out here is basically the, uh, the beginning of that project, which would entail the uh, hillside reno uh, renovations to accommodate school admin. Um, and we have the school master plan, which is also uh, uh, an abbreviated or a targeted effort related to that school master plan is in the Maytown warrant, um, which would entail a study uh, of what the programming needs all of work and what, uh, um, what, what would be the outcome of that programming adjustment 
which was which according to the D1 plan is to bring the six grades over to uh, to Pollard and how that would factor into any uh, major um, type of upgrades that are required that uh, Pollard needs to pursue with regard to sustaining its um, its system environment, uh, particularly the the ventilation, the uh, any any upgrades to the HVAC uh, and any plumbing requirements that are necessary at that school and electrical upgrades. So that's that's pretty much a snapshot of where we're, what we're looking at at least over the next physical year. Um, and then, so Hank, would you just turn to the next slide? So what, what that's sort of revealed is that we're not, um, we're not super busy as we have been in the past years. I mean, we've done a tremendous amount of construction over the last three or four years. Um, basically almost $150 million over the last three years, which is a su substantial amount of work. Um, so we've looked at our, at our uh, basically staffing and um, we are, well, at the top you'll see, uh, I'm looking at retiring at the end of the year, um, around October. Um, which I think is fine considering the, our forecast. And I think the, the department will do well to move forward with, uh, with new leadership. Um, but we've also even feeling our way through what's out there um, in working with the town manager and getting the department budget together um, we've asked that Steve actually move over to uh, uh, facilities um, to assist facilities who has the lead with regard to main sustaining not just the schools but town to, town buildings as well to satisfy the new criteria for occupying these buildings. We've been closed. The town buildings have been closed now since March of last year. And those have to start opening. So um, Steve has indicated a willingness to move over and uh, that's the plan. So essentially, that's our work plan in the uh, immediate future. Um, and I guess that's all I have to, to comment on. Okay. Any questions or comments, but thank you, Steve. I think that was, that was good. So being able to sort of get a recap and then a look ahead, I think is important for us. I think we're well positioned, um, but you know, any last minute comments before we wrap this piece up? And then just, we have a couple other pieces of, of business. Steve, we're gonna miss you, but I think, you know, as you said, we'll be fine. <laughs> I, that's what you said. I'm um, sure you will be. Uh, but we'll miss you. I think it's gonna be a huge um, loss for the town, but um, we're happy for you, so. We wish you the best, and we're, we're, we're you know, it'll be nice to um, that you're staying on till October to finish a lot of these things. But it's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you. We have plenty of time to talk about that. <laughs> exactly, Erwin. I like to save my comments till October. <laughs> <laughs> Guess I'll, I'll stay. Go ahead, Gene. Yeah, so, um, and uh, back to your point, Stuart, that you made a few minutes ago, that sometimes um, I feel like, you know, we're working on these projects and it's always, you know, very 
pretty uh, strict and dry material, you know, finances, project schedule review, things like that. And it's nice, nice to reflect, like just to see all of this, all of this work that's been done over the last few years. And it's, I think it's unbelievable amount of work and it's great things. And I want to tell you that I don't know how much visibility you guys have into how much feedback you get, but I, I guess I'm lucky in a way that I get the feedback through clients that buy our houses. It's mostly young families that are moving into Needham or they're moving within Needham to different areas. And I just want to tell you that they, when, when we do our survey and we ask them, how do you like it? How do you like Needham? You know, things like that. And there's always feedback about the infrastructure in town, about the pool complex where they take their kids in the summer, about, uh, you know, the, the fire station that's being built, about the new school, the Sanita Williams, that is being loved by several of our clients. So it's just... Um, it's very nice to hear that uh, people are actually appreciating those features and they love living in this town because of all those things that, that uh, you guys did over the last few years. That's great feedback. I mean, that's, that's a real, real plus. I think that's, uh, that's awesome. But with that, I agree. We've been talking about visibility and lack of visibility. I think as you're opening up the buildings, maybe there's an opportunity for marketing to give the visibility um, for all of the work that we've done and said, you know, we're reopening these great buildings. And did you know, blank, 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 because I feel like, you know, you do all this great work, but then people just take it for granted and, or they don't know. They don't know all these great statistics that you just showed. So anyway. I, I, and to add to that, Natasha, what I honestly, what I would do, and you know, I, I, I love Instagram and videos and things like that. I would literally make those slides and turn that into photos of all the buildings and just put it on several um, Needham accounts that are popular on Instagram. And I think people would appreciate it and they would love it. I'd like to suggest, Steve, um, is maybe we touch base with the communication director. Maybe there's an opportunity here. Um, you know, hearing that from from Gene and, and getting it from the real people versus our own perception, I think it's pretty powerful. Do you think we should go to the communication director and have a chat, or is that something we need to do differently? I mean, I can do it, but right? Steve's right. thinking about it. He's not sold. <laughs> George always has a comment. Please, yeah, George, what do you think? While well, Steve thinks about it. <laughs> George, you're muted. George, you're mute. Um, the, the interesting thing is that we've been in existence this year for 25 years. Wow. Okay? And um, when you look back, and I, I've done this kind of historical perspective, I actually put together a list of all the projects that we've accomplished in 25 years. You, you wouldn't believe it. The, the number, it's unbelievable uh, what we've done. And I, I really don't think most people in this town um, appreciate, some do that know about it, but I think so many people don't appreciate how efficiently we've done this over the last 25 years. Uh, both uh, your team, Steve and the PBBC um, it's, it's been an incredible journey um, and compared to other towns, it's, it's been amazing in my opinion. Uh, there ought to be some way of maybe putting something together that identifies how effective this uh, has been um, over that period of time. And certainly the last few years, it's been um, remarkable how many projects we've accomplished. But it, I, I, I can honestly remember that 25 years ago, we, we, we never thought we'd be meeting every Monday night. <laughs> and, and for probably close to 15 to 18 years, we met every other, every, every other Monday night. Uh, and only until recently, we skip a few meetings here and there. But it, that's, that's pretty amazing. And, uh, and how that's affected uh, how the rating agencies look at the town of Needham in terms of uh, its bond rating. They really do, they're one of the few people that look at how effective uh, the whole town has been in this regard. So anyway, um, 
maybe the fact that we've, we're celebrating our 25th anniversary this year um, it would be a good time to do something like that. And even put it on Needham Times or some, there has, should be some, but I think, I think George has become our communications expert. I can hear it on his voice. Yeah. Richard? Yeah, uh, to George's point, uh, I think uh, actually um, you might consider uh, get it chatting with uh, Mark Mandel at the Needham Channel. Maybe putting to get together a little uh, uh, little report on uh, maybe a program, half hour program on uh, on the various projects around town. And George, you'd be the perfect narrator, <laughs> and you could uh, you could uh, you know I think that'd be a lot of fun to put together. It's an idea. I'll do that. I'll take an action. I think we should we should do something. Um, communications director, the Needham Channel. We've got twenty five yep, years of history. I I, I think all of the people that are moving into town, they're all on Instagram and a little bit less on Facebook. I think you need to make a three minute video for Facebook and a one minute video for Instagram. And that's how you're gonna reach and, most of the people. And Gene is an expert and I know that for a fact. So he's volunteering to help do it. <laughs> I will do it. <laughs> you're uh, very good at it. He do documents it. everything. Yeah. Well, I know that uh, Catherine is looking for a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> which is great. She's been wonderful. Catherine looks shell shocked right now. <laughs> we have Jean, so, so Catherine, Steve, was... and George. We've our, we have our communications team. <laughs> wow, I put the question to Steve and how quickly he deflected. It's gone around the horn and just landed in your lap, Catherine. I like that. That's... He still hasn't responded. He's... <laughs> I know. Oh, my. Okay, well, I, I, I think I've got some action. Is there any more comments? Otherwise, I'd like to go to the next agenda item, but I do have as a wrap up, I, I, you know, I think we should talk to the communication director. I think we should recognize uh, George, 25 years of, of what we've done. But I think the most important thing is, is that there should be some level of insight um, to, to the, uh, what this town has and how it got there. So, okay. June of, June of 1996. Really? How many was, members? Was the town meeting? It was the same number of members. Oh. It's always been the same. Yeah. 1996 town 19 meeting. Then? Were you the only one that's been here the full time? I believe so. Yeah. Who's your number two? Irwin? Irwin, currently Irwin, I think is. Irwin, you're on, you're on, you're mute. on mute. You're on mute. You're on mute, Irwin. Mute. <laughs> you think I know by now. Uh, George and I were on the study committee that led to the PVBC. Right. And I was on the school committee when the PVBC was formed. I think it was a rep on uh, probably Board, Broadmeadow and Elliott, some of the earlier uh, school projects. Right. And then when, when you retired from the school committee, I, I threw out a big lasso and grabbed hold and said, come on to this committee. Actually, I think you volunteered didn't know what you were getting into, but you liked it. No, I had an idea. I really have enjoyed it, especially yep. uh, working with you and so many other people, including the group before us to, uh, right now. Sure. It's been a rewarding, personally rewarding experience. I think so like as Irwin's well. retiring. Erwin, it sounds like you're, you're like wrapping it up or something. <laughs> You can't. No, leave. no, no. <laughs> unless it's unless it's subconscious, I'm not aware of it. <laughs> exactly. All right, enough of this retirement talk. Okay, we'll close this item out. So the highlights of 2020 and look ahead. Thank you, Steve, for, for pulling that together and and that perspective. Um, we just have some um, a couple of voting items to take care of. Um, hopefully, quick, and then I think we just I just have one question relative to the uh, net zero uh, topic, but. For the invoices, we have Memorial Park and we have Mitchell that we need to vote. Um, Catherine, you're on mute. You're on mute. You're on mute. For Jack Cogswell, um, there's a PSS that um, we forgot to, to process. That's, okay, I got it right here, yep. Okay, so why don't we start with the uh, Jack's Cogswell PSS? Good with that? Okay, so I'm gonna put forth a uh, invoice, uh, excuse me, the PSS for Weston and Samson, the solar application fee for $648.
coming out of the engineering budget for Jack Cogswell. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Uh, thank you. Any questions? Hearing none, coming to the roll call. Richard? Aye. George? Aye. Erwin? Aye. Jean? Aye. Natasha? Aye. Chair is aye. Okay. Um, we'll next go to the Memorial Park Fieldhouse invoice for Ritz Frost Shoemay commissioning services of $2,200 coming out of the miscellaneous budget. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Erwin. Any questions? Hearing none, seeing none coming to the roll call. Richard? Aye. George? Aye. Erwin? Aye. Jean? Aye. Natasha? Aye. The chair is aye. Last invoice is for the Mitchell Modular Classrooms. There is an invoice for Door and Whittier for the January 2021 services, $250 coming out of the architecture budget. Here, second. Seconded. Thank you, George. Any questions? Hearing none, seeing none, come to the vote. Roll call. Richard. Aye. George. Aye. Erwin. Aye. Jean. Aye. Natasha. Aye. Chair is aye. And that, I believe, is all invoices. Last call, Catherine. Nope. I think that's it. Thanks. Great. Okay. So that ends the invoices. And the only other topic was just the net zero energy construction. I know, Natasha, you brought it up. Um, and there is that email about the uh, from Ed about presenting something to the committee. Um, my thoughts are, sure, we should probably do that, right? And, and Steve Popper as well. We probably should do a presentation. But where I stand, just as a committee member, not as a chair, but I'm not sure what we can really do. I think it's really a town issue more so than PBC because I feel like we do a pretty good job to ask the questions through the process to ensure that we are energy efficient and we're doing the right things. But we're not policy setters. Um, we're trying to build the most efficient buildings as possible, um, but it seems to be more of a town body, select board, FinCom, planning board, I don't know, some part of the town that would take and adopt that net zero and then we would adopt that if it would go further in with the work that we do. Comments from anybody in terms of, of that thinking or Natasha? I think we should get educated and in, in where this is going and seeing how this could be a bigger platform for the town if when, you know, when, when that takes place. I think um, Kate, if it, would, if it would be possible for Kate to be part of this or you know, if for some reason she's available or someone, because I think there has to be a bigger discussion about the strategy that the town wants to take on the environment. And um, so I think, I think, I mean, we've been doing, we've been doing things based on mostly MSCBA requesting us to do things, but so, but we're not really creating a, you know, or, or uh, we're not helping create a, a strategy for the buildings moving forward. So I think getting educated in it as a group would be great and, um, and see where that takes us. But I agree, I think we're not setting policy, but we're getting educated so that we can influence policy. We might, we might wanna use that as an opportunity, Natasha, to, um, to educate others and simply say, listen, we're putting this on our agenda to educate the PBBC, uh, we'd like to invite you to sit in on that and, and send it to Kate and to the select board and to the finance committee mm -hmm. and to people like Michael Grice, et cetera. And well, just uh, ha doing have, everybody, yeah. have, have everybody be able to tune in to that segment of our meeting. And, and it's primarily for information and discussion. It, it, might, it might move things forward a little bit. I think that's a great idea. Hank? Um, in other towns like Concord, um, there have been um, committees, subcommittees, and um, sort of public action committees that have put forward town meeting votes to mandate or create an action plan for net zero on all future buildings. 
and Lexington has a similar. Um, so th there are templates that towns have used to um, take the next step. And those might be useful um, to look at. And certainly uh, the Green Needham Collaborative um, could be the stronger spokesman or spokespeople as they are some of the most best educated amongst the, uh, the citizens of, of Needham to speak to these issues. But it, it may take a town meeting vote to, uh, or, or Kate should, um, they have funded a study previously that looked at um, uh, not sustainability, but um, the ability to recuperate after a major storm. Um, and so I think sustainability could be another uh, detailed analysis. Resiliency. Hank? Resiliency, excuse me. Yes. So what I hear so far is we should we should uh, be a catalyst for holding the meeting and, and bring others in. Especially okay. right now when we're not as busy as we normally are, it's a great time to do research because most of the carbon and most of the energy consumed are, is by the buildings in the town. And so if we want to make an impact moving forward to <coughs> save money and to, and, to, and to make sure that we have a good future, it should start from us and invite everyone else. If there isn't already something gurgling somewhere else, yeah. Steve, is that something you can organize? with us or is that something I need to reach out to them and just slot in the time, do you think? Well, you know, Tank has taken a very uh, active role in connecting with Green Needham. Ed, he's working with Ed on some initiatives right now um, but I do think it's the committee's direction, not, not the department's direction that really needs to, if, if they are interested in spearheading um, action and involvement, I, I don't think it's the department's um, place to do it, nor do I think the department has the same kind of impact that the committee would have. So um, I really think it's, it's the committee has to decide whether to take a leadership role in this or not. Um, obviously, Green Needham, I, I was wondering when Hank mentioned, you know, the template with these other towns, why Green Needham isn't looking at that template. I mean, they are invested in in moving this forward. I, I don't want to take an initiative beyond support. I mean, we're a supporting element. Yeah, no, I guess what I'm, I, I'm sorry, I didn't ask it right. I was wondering if you could help orchestrate it within the meeting. So if, if looking at our agenda, um, where's the best place to slot and, and communicate with them? Or do you want me to communicate with Ed? I just need to know from your perspective on the project agendas over the next few meetings, where might be a good time to slot that in? And then I can reach out to, to Kate and others and, and suggest that we're doing this. Well, frankly, um, the next meeting on the, uh, which would be on the 22nd, um, it, because we, you know, the only active projects we have are police fire with the possibility of Cogswell uh, in, you know, possibly light, you know, and coming into play with regard to solar. We, at the moment, we don't have anything uh, scheduled for next, for that meeting on the 22nd. I certainly, we can put it on the agenda and have that presentation by C C it was a CMT um, that uh, um, Ed was proposing. We uh, 
we have, and it would initially inform the committee um, as to, um, you know, Natasha seems to be already informed about net zero. Um, you know, I'm not, I, I don't think the department should make the determination. I, I really think it's the committee on whether or not we want to impress moving forward. We've already taken the initiative uh, on Emory Grover to include solar as part of the scope. Um, and that was really, again, formulated by the committee as being an objective as an outcome of the select, select board. And I haven't gotten any pushback on that scope, although we haven't fully vetted that scope yet with, uh, with all the parties. Um, I, I think it's your, it, it really should be you, Stuart, to determine whether or not we should be in, you know, I, I'm giving you the place, you know, I think we have the place at that next meeting uh, on the 22nd to continue our discussion if you so wish. Other thoughts from committee members on that? I mean, I just wonder if the, the 22nd is is too short a time for people to, to adjust their schedules, but it might be, Hank? Yeah, we, we tend to have a lighter schedule, the second meeting of each month. Yeah. So um, perhaps the 27th of April. So, yeah, okay. And that's very I think close. There's enough planning. If we want to include more than just us, I think we, it, we, we should try and facilitate enough mm -hmm. advance warning on that. Well, the, the other advantage of that date is that Earth Day is the 25th. <laughs> and, um, it, it could be an opportunity for the town and Green Needham Collaborative to have uh, several discussions going on, not just within the PBBC, but broader within the town. Um, it will be just prior to town meetings, so I don't know if people will be burned out. But I, I should also mention that I have been supporting an effort by uh, DPW to put in um, electric vehicle chargers in three locations within the town. Um, and I've also had some discussions with Ed Quinlan regarding opportunities within town, both public and private, for locating um, uh, solar canopies um, within, I guess right now, the focus is on, potentially on, um, on the Newman School but looking at chapter 25A um, fun, uh, arrangements similar to the one we did with the RTS where it's a private developer who puts up the majority of the money, the upfront capital. Um, so I, th I think all of those um, could be outlined. And, um, but I, I think you're right, Green Needham Collaborative um, we could have a series. We, we might be able next on the 22nd might be able to have a preliminary presentation regarding net zero. And then um, maybe we charge them to put together, do research and put together a, uh, an action plan for, um, uh, for the town to start the discussion. And it'll take at least a year, at least a year, to um, get that um, organized and agreed to. But you're right, the select board has to be really focused on that if, if that will happen. Okay. Um, and we could probably even ask some of the high school students who are, have been asking us or asking the town members about um, similar installations at the high school. Yeah. Uh, so I think it can be both a bubble up as well as a bubble down solution. Okay. Okay. I'll take that action. But if we could just, I think 
the, the what I see is the 27th as being the best date. Um, we don't have anything pressing right now to make it to the 22nd of March. Let's get it to where enough people can be involved and give allow us to have some more discussion as well. Everybody agree? Yeah. Did you say the 22nd of March or did, are you moving it forward? 27th April. I think the 22nd of March, which is two weeks away, plus would be too short a notice. I think we want to get more people involved and get it on their calendars. That it's so going to happen. April. Be more marketing done and everything else. Yeah. Is getting the attendance, right? As much as what I'm hearing is as much as we're interested, our real goal is hopefully to bring more awareness. Yeah, beyond. absolutely. But are we still meeting on the 22nd? Yes. Okay. As far as I know, or uh, Steve, let's go back to you quickly on that. I think, I think the question of meeting on the 22nd is probably still open. Um, I don't want to close it out just yet. At the moment, uh, I think we're probably, we can move over to April if, uh, if nothing comes up surfaces, uh, so uh, I think allow us a week before we make any decision on that. For right now, it's a, it's an, it's a uh, date on the calendar. Okay. Great. Anything else on the net zero conversation? Okay. Well, with that, I think we're, any other open topics from anybody? Okay. Seeing none here now. I know you got your hand up, George, but I think you're done, aren't you? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I didn't take it down. <laughs> I knew you always uh, want the last word, but that's okay. Um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sure. With that, then I think we're, I mean, George, you and I have a topic to discuss about, but we'll do that outside of this at another point. Um, Correct. So um, that's great. I think with that, we'll close the meeting down. Have a great, great. rest of the week, everybody. And See you next time. Thanks, Thanks. Thank Take you. care. Bye. Bye.